Everybody's different. The answer is very different for each person. You have to uh, figure it out the long, slow route, which is, you know, trial and test, then trial and test again. So yeah. test, retest, and a person has to be committed. That You know, what makes a person committed is you motivating them, you inspiring them, that they're watching you do your thing inside of the community, and they're like, man, there's something about the way these people do this. Hey, welcome to another great episode of the Gym Owners Grow Zone podcast, the show designed to help gym owners improve and grow their business. I'm your host, Andres Escobar, and I'm so grateful to have you join us today. Derek shares how he built his box debt-free and his strategies for creating revenue and developing his gym identity in coachings, programming, and client transformation. Derek is a level three CrossFit instructor with a passion for improving the well-being and function of his members. He has an athletic background in football and weightlifting and has competed on four CrossFit teams. His coaching style involves customizing wellness programs for individuals based on proven assessments and lifestyle practices. If this is your first time listening to our show, please consider subscribing to the podcast and share this episode with someone you think would enjoy it. As we dive into Derek's episode today, listen how he started and grew his gym. Hey, welcome back to the Gym Owners Growth Zone. I'm your host, Andres Escobar, as you know. And today we have Derek Bishop. Thank you so much, Derek, for jumping in and just having this conversation with us about the thrills of gym ownership. And I want to make sure that our audience has a full picture of who you are and how you got here. So if you could get us started with just a little origin story and how you got to where you're at right now. For sure. Thanks for having me, Andres, number one. It's a pleasure to be on here. Yeah. Uh, you're a great guy, and this is a great thing you're doing. So I appreciate it very much. Thank you. So uh, not, not to take too much time with this. But long story short, played sports my whole life. I went and played Division One football at Liberty University. And just like a lot of ex-jocks, right, get out of college. I'm trying to find my way in the world. And about two years out of college, I'm working all these odd and in jobs. Uh, my girlfriend at the time takes me to a CrossFit gym. I do CrossFit, and instantly I'm hooked. I'm like, wow, this is exactly what I you know, need. Uh, I love it. It has that community aspect. And there's also that competition aspect, but not overly aggressive. It wasn't like being in the college locker room again, but it was nice to be able to do something where you're racing other people. And uh, I just really love the, the atmosphere and the environment. So I was 23 years old at the time, uh, and that was down at CrossFit East Boca, I believe it was called, long story okay. short. I made that decision literally like week two of, of joining their classes. I was like, this is what I want to do for a living. I love wow. this. This is all I can think about. I'm like skipping my job already. Uh, <laughs> I was selling up. I was selling uh, personal training at UFIT. So I was a sales manager at UFIT. So I was working inside the industry okay. and I was actually doing really well, but it didn't go so well after I started CrossFit because I was skipping my job to go work out. And that's how you know, right? You, you know, something uh, is, is really meant for you when it's all you can think about. You're obsessed with it, so on and so forth. You're skipping your, your gym job to go exactly. work out. That just makes <laughs> so much sense, <laughs> especially if you know about CrossFit, right? Right. You know that that's such a strong community. And so I just love that you just – you got it, – it flipped the switch for you. So yep, cool. Yep. So I threw out there, you know, I'm hungry. Uh, you know, I'm new to the game, and I know I love the game. And CrossFit Boynton Beach at the time had a staff that had been there a while. Uh, so I respected that. I was like, Rob, give me that gym. Give me that gym. I'll turn it around. Give me one year. And I promise I'll turn that around for you. He looks at me. He goes, wow. you turn in your two weeks notice and I'll give you that gym. Wow. So like the literally audacity, bro. Yeah. <laughs> the audacity. How do you ask for something like that? Can I share with you something yeah. that I just received yesterday? And it's like, you cannot receive because you do not conceive yeah. so you already in your mind you conceived the idea of owning this gym and you just asked for it and this guy said yeah what's the worst that could happen he'll say right. no 
okay, then you move on. You move, move on. Your purpose is lined up with that. So I love that, dude. That's so good. So good. Thank you so much for sharing that. Continue on that story, then I'll come back to that point you, you just made. So uh, burned all the bridges behind me, right? Because I knew I loved this. Burned the boats. <laughs> burned the boats behind me. And to be honest, if you're, if you're going to be a small business owner in, in today's world, you're in the United States and yeah. in Florida. You're, you're in one of the most economically prime pieces of land on face of planet Earth. So anyways, I take over the gym and I put my heart and soul into it. Yeah. So here's here, – you'll love this story. True story. Week two. Now, I, at my jobs before, I'm one of those people I never miss work. I never show up late. So we had okay. 80 something members. We have 270 members today. So it's, it's more than three X, but, uh, I just made it all about customer service. I, you know, that's something I did learn from college and my business economics degree and working in sales. It has to be about the customers, the members and what they receive. And from there, uh, we just started, uh, traveling around and competing. And then we won a fair amount of competitions in South Florida. So that built our credibility, built our reputation and that created I really started to focus on digital marketing and digital presence, mm -hmm. and that exponentially uh, grew the business uh, from there. So, so long story short, I was a guy that was an ex-jock, found CrossFit, loved it, and I loved helping people. And I believe in the in the methodology of CrossFit, especially the way that we do it here at the CrossFit Squad, and it's it's really taken off. Success is there, and and you guys are climbing and and growing. You're moving into a new location, right? Yes, sir. Yep. yep nice. Yep. Exciting nice. Exciting awesome. stuff. Yep. That is exciting. That's awesome. Um, so just as life takes us through this journey, uh, roller coasters, you know, we've been there ups and downs, left and rights. I want you to share with us. What are some of the guardrails, the tracks that have helped you stay focused and moving forward? What a great question. You know, uh, uh, owning a small business, uh, is a contact sport, right? right? It's, it's very challenging. There's going to be adversity at, at every corner. You're going to feel overwhelmed, especially in those growing phases where you don't have the revenue and income to start paying for all these different facets that you know is going to help you grow as a small business. So you got to do it the hard way. You got to, you got to stay up late. Uh, the guardrails, I'd say I was just very fortunate to, uh, be coached through my football career, uh, through my uh, college courses, mm -hmm. and then just in proximity of being around great men and leaders yeah. who built into me, uh, you know, that are now our core values here at the CrossFit squad of resilience, grit, persistence. And to be honest, I'm going to make this gym, this product, whatever we're doing, right? What, whatever it is that me and my family and my group that we're doing, we don't quit. You cannot demoralize us. You cannot get me to stop working towards that. So I'm going to make it happen. There is no, there is no option of quitting. And to be honest, and I think for anybody like yourself, you, you're a successful person who's, who's making your way and all of that, uh, it's too competitive to, to do it any other way. You're just not going to have long-term success. It's the only way that you'll take all the punches needed. And then through that, through that pain, the, the, yeah. the, the, the pain, you're going to learn what best works. And then once you know, you know, but there's only one way to get there. And that, that's the hard way and put in the time, put in the hours. And, uh, if, if you stick to it long enough, you'll figure the stuff out. Yeah. I love that. Cause I'm thinking to myself, this proverbial, you know, you're, you're mining for gold and right. then you stop. And if you knew where the gold was, you wouldn't stop. Right. 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 So you exactly. don't quit. You don't quit. It's just <laughs> yeah. that simple. And, and the thing is, that. you know, you're, you're a king in your own right and you need to have advisors. There's no king that's ruled <laughs> without an advisor. And you talked about being coached. That's super important. I think people need to understand they're not to do this alone. You haven't mentioned any obstacles or challenges, but I know you've had some. Right. We've all had some, especially in business and personal life. It just is part of it. How can you share with us? Like, you know, people talked about, I've, I've heard about this, you know, where, you know, you just go in debt and you go, okay, well, I, I just know that it's right there. The next, I, I'm not going to stop digging. I got to make sure that 
I got, you know, right. that credit card or, or something of that nature. And it's happened to me before. I've, I've been there, right? And how do I build a team? And I don't even have a team. I've never done that. What do you, what do you do, right? So the obstacles are there. So if you could share like an obstacle that you've had and how you were able to overcome it, I would be great because somebody might be going through the same thing that you've already gone through, right? Right. Uh, great question. And this is going to be my take on, on there, there's different ways to do business, right? There, there's yeah. a million ways to, to cut the pie. So I'm not big on debt. That's just me personally. I'm not saying it's the best way to go. Everybody right. does their thing different. I do right. not believe in, in debt as something you that there's, you should utilize. So it. don't, don't, don't encounter that, that right. obstacle. If you're not right. Don't want it. I, don't well, do some, some other way. hundred like percent. So the obstacle for us as a growing business was I was not willing to, you know, take out $30,000 on a loan or borrow it from someone. So we had to do it the old school way, which was we had to create revenue, but without those improved, without improved equipment, without, uh, you know, that, that extra money at the beginning of investing in a ton of ads, digital presence. So what, so what did that, so I'm making these decisions as I'm taking ownership of the business years three and four. I was like, so what does that mean? That means our product because a company is nothing but product, right? You're as right. good as the product that you're selling. The product that we're selling is coaching, programming, and transforming you physically, mentally, and emotionally into a higher achieving person. And so word of mouth. You know, what reigns true to me is you have what you need. Just use what you have to get you to the next spot. That's right. it. Like that's, that's that simple, right. you know, it's, it's so clear. It's so clear to me, you know, <laughs> some people get wrapped up in the whole, oh man, I need this in order so I can do this and not that, you know, right. and listen, this is just a microphone. I think, you know, nothing real fancy, right? right? It's just a simple microphone. You buy it and you get a little thing. I mean, literally it doesn't take much for a podcast, but people can think like, oh my gosh, how'd you do the podcast? And like, it's, if I tell you, you'd be like, you're going to do it, right? right? They don't do it. They don't do it. So just get right. started. Just get started. Guys, yeah. if it's a podcast, if it's a, a CrossFit affiliate, if it's, you know, your own training online, whatever it is, right. just start doing it, right? There's there's some listeners out there that they're thinking about starting a gym. There's people that, that they're how to grow it. Well, listen, just use what you have. Get moving on that process. And then you can get to the next. I love it. So that's that's what 100%. I've learned right there. In 12 years, you've been able to see things come and go. What are one? Th what is one of the biggest issues you see in the fitness industry right now that needs to change so we can grow stronger? What a, what a great question that is, too. I'll, I'll say this for the fitness industry, and it probably, if I had to guess, pertains to all industry is people that are high level practitioners, people that actually sit in there and live and breathe the idea of delivering the best service they possibly can to the member or, or, or the consumer or the buyer. Now I know that sounds super cliche and boring and all of that, but I, what I see in the fitness industry is a ton of propaganda a ton of, we're going to take this one fact, right? We're going to take this one fact, blow it up because it sounds super sexy. We're going to spend a ton of ad dollars behind it. We're going to rope in Suzy Q, all right, with that one thing that looks really shiny. And then we're going to sell her a template or something, some person on a screen telling her something cookie cutter thing that works for everybody, that doesn't work for everybody because everybody's different. So uh, for the fitness industry, of course, I'm coming from a super biased opinion of a of a small proprietary uh, affiliate owner, but is is propaganda and bad or false marketing? All right, to get to suck people in to quick fixes, which anybody that is worth anything knows that n equals one. So everybody's different. The answer is very different for each person. You have to uh, figure it out the long, slow route, which is you know. Trial and test, then trial and test again. So yeah. test, retest, and a person has to be committed. That you know what makes a person committed 
is you motivating them, you inspiring them that they're watching you do your thing inside of the community. And they're like, man, there's something about the way these people do this, the way they are, the way they look, the way they act. In the gym, you're helping people get results. You're, I would say, would be an influenced person in their lives. What about you? What do you, who in your past has influenced you as a, as a person? Uh, maybe there's a story behind it. Somebody that's, that's really been impactful in your life, right? Because that can't be trainers and, and coaches and, and stuff that we mentioned before. But is there somebody that stands out that's like, you know what? If it wasn't for this guy, I don't know where I would be right now. There's like, person, there's, like ten, there's, there's, there's like 10 answers to that. <laughs> we, <laughs> we don't have enough time on the podcast for me to go right. through all of them. So I'm going to try to find one sure. that was the most differential in my life. It would have to be my strength coach at Liberty University, Bill Gillespie. Uh, so my head coach uh, at Liberty University, Danny Rocco, coach under Bill Parcells, Bill Belichick. Mm. When this guy gave speeches, it transformed you. It, 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 it had you understand like how much focus – and commitment and sacrifice you needed to succeed at anything. Uh, So he was great. But Bill Gillespie was the head strength coach at Liberty University. At 63 years old last year, he is the only one of two men to bench 1,100 pounds. So to give you an idea of this kind of person, he's a mutant freak of a human. But what was so amazing about Coach Bill was he was – so he was 310 pounds with a six-pack. And this oh, guy wow. was a world – so he gave – when there was a strength coach seminar anywhere in the world, he was begged to be keynote speaker. So inside the strength coaching world, he's a – he's like a god. He, he, he's a mega guy. He chose to stay at Liberty University, which is a Division One school, but it's not Alabama. It's not Florida just right. because he was a graduate of Liberty University when the school first began. So he had this uh, you know, uh, deep loyalty to the school, and he's also a devout Christian. And – he, he balanced a way of demanding as much from you as humanly possible, mm-hmm. but yet with a positive, like, lightness. I, mm. I, you, you have to be around this man to see it in action and to completely appreciate, like, he had this strength, and you, when you, were, you didn't want to disappoint him. Like, you would hate yourself if, if he watched you do something and, and, and he wasn't like, man, I'm proud of you, Derek. Anything less than that was just like, crushing to you because you admired him so much because he was such a man of discipline goal is a beautiful word to hear when you're scoring on the soccer field this last world cup was won by argentina because of one important player yeah you got it it was the goalie he secured the win for the team and in the same way review biz platform will catch negative reviews before they go online In addition, it helps you score and promote fresh new reviews so you can crush the competition. So don't let those big box gyms take your clients. ReviewBiz will help you build your online presence and turn your own members into your best sales reps. Get your first five reviews for only $1. All you got to do is go to reviewbiz.io forward slash try to get started. And so you mentioned um, self-control. Yes. Joy. Actually, you started with joy. Joy, uh, self-control, and then having faith. So he yes. had those three qualities, those three fruits in his life. It was evident. And then you were like, wow, you're attracted to what that was and how that pushed you to your level where you're at now. So, wow, I love that. I love that because, you know <sighs> – those those things are not in everybody right when you find it man that is a treasure to hold so i'm i'm excited that you got a chance to do that and so you are where you are that's awesome um i appreciate it man um all good stuff all all fun fun and stuff but you know there had to been a time in your life when you were stunt for growth yeah. Right. You, you're like stuck. I've been there. I've been there myself where I'm stuck. And I just think about, uh, coach Matt Chernard. He helped me get unstuck, you know, and he's actually a CrossFit affiliate in Canada and he helped coach me through some things. Oh, mentally, that's awesome. 
That's great. mentally, dude, and not just like physical. We did some stuff, stuff training stuff, but but it was like mental, and 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 you know, nutrition and all this good stuff. And and so, what type of thing? What would you invest more into to gain growth faster? To get that faster growth? And what would you like get rid of? Right. So it's like a two part question. It's like what would you like invest more into, and what would you take out so you can like move up. And, and grow more faster. Again, another great question. When I read that, I was pondering what the what the best answers for that is. And even, even as I sit here now, I'm still wondering exactly what the best answers, uh, you know, to that is. I would say, sure. Back in, I wish I would have gave more confidence into building relationships inside of my team, not the members. I was always mm-hmm. giving tons of time to the members. Yeah. Was, was spending time getting to know and building more relationships for the coaching staff and the other parts of the team and understanding and having confidence in people mm-hmm. uh, to, to go execute for the business. But the reason that didn't happen was because I didn't have the leadership skills yet, right? Y- you learn the hard way. And I didn't have confidence in myself to be able to manage and instill and hold accountable to what that person needs to do to stay and be a great representative of the team and the CrossFit squad. Now, today, the team is very tight knit. It's been pretty much the same staff for four years. But wow. there was there was like a six year growth period where where I had to, to understand those things. Yeah. And so I wish I would have. Uh, you know, understood that earlier and this would have happened faster and there would have been uh, less growing pains. Well, no, it, and, and, and this is, I'm about to ask you because I want to know what you did to invest in those relationships because there's people out there that have gyms and they have staff. There's like a rotating door, right? Right. Uh, and so I, you know, I know, that that's not the way to build a business and grow a business. Right. If you have somebody that believes in your vision and can, can come alongside you and grow something of, of meaning, like what did you do? What it was something that you invested more into, you know, I I'll, don't know. I'll, I'll tell you what was big was when we yeah. started paying for their education. That, that's always okay. big, right? So you're right. asking, you're asking these coaches, be a professional, hone your craft, hone your skill. And, you know, we're not doctors, so you're not getting paid absurd amount of money. So money's tight. So when I took that off their plate, like, hey, we're going to invest in you guys. We want you to hone your skills. We want you to sell, you know, continually educate yourself, and we're willing to invest in you. That is definitely, for all gym owners out there, coaches, the best thing you can do. Because the amount of appreciation they get from that, that they don't have to worry about the financial stress. Now they just get to hone their craft and work. That was a big part. And... Understanding that, especially inside the first three to six months, that there's going to be a lot of growing pains, okay? When, when you're doing warm-ups, when you're communicating, especially for us, we have very large classes. You know, we have three or four classes a day that can get to 20 to 30 people in a class. So your first month teaching classes, especially if you're, say, 24 years old and half the class is sure. middle-aged doctors, lawyers, and, and uh, Wall Street from downtown West Palm Beach, that can be a lot of personalities that you're dealing with you're managing the room you're working the flow and you're also teaching extremely complex movements like a full snatch and a ring muscle up right so th- th- those are a lot of moving parts <laughs> I love those yeah <laughs> don't we all but but giving people observing them and then bringing them back and then coaching them up and, and doing it in a way but what what really worked for me is telling them like hey as long as you keep giving effort okay and you're not purposefully sabotaging and you keep in mind that you're here to serve the member, okay? You don't burn relationships. We're good. That you just kind of like top of mind. Got it. What is it? And you just kind of go with it. Gotcha. And then, and then we'll finish up with our last question. And Sounds then, good, brother. And then we'll, we'll allow everybody to continue on in their day. So here, obviously, I already asked the question, but this is like another one. So ready, fast five. Fast five. Who is an influential person in your business journey? Rob Labar. What's uh, one thing you wish you had known when you began your business? How powerful uh, digital presence is. 
Mm. Dude, don't even get me started. Right. <laughs> That's right. You. I mean, review biz, reputation, it, it's so important. And so big. It, it either attract or detract. That's it. Straight up. Beautiful. Yep. Beautiful. Right. Because you want to do one to many. You know, hey, one to one relationships, great on right. a person, but digitally, you want to do one to many. That's right. it. Right. Don't mess around. Exponential That's growth, so for sure. Yeah. Do that, guys. What's a book? a blog, a podcast, media that you've consumed that positively has impacted you recently? My junior year of college, Coach Danny Rocco made us, made us read the book as a team, Good to Great by Jim Collins. So what is one of your favorite online tools? Uh, Uplaunch 100% just automates uh, the communication through our website. When people inquire, it, it goes all the way to scheduling the appointment, and it has been just a huge factor in exponentially growing, you know, growing our membership and locking in those appointments. They show up and they're like, Derek, you just texted us. I'm like, heck yeah, I did. Let's get you going. Let's do this. That's the best dude. It's great. You know, and, and you still have that personal connection. You can still reply. I love it. Yep. You know, up lunch we recently got purchased by Datco, which is Zen planner, which is a lot of boxes use Zen planner, actually 3000 boxes. Wow. And so, um, we're review is actually going to be integrated partner with them. They're going oh, to refer fantastic. our, their, their, yeah, you'll, you'll see us pop into your, uh, it'll be a great dashboard. ad for sure. I love that. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, dude. Yeah, no, for it's sure. Good. Um, so we'll, um, one more question in fast five. Yep. And so what's one habit or practice that you do that you believe everybody would benefit from? So obviously exercise, sure. but I'll, but, but, but I'll say, uh, let's take this to the next level. I think that it, that is Please. helpful and, uh, just being more mindful and taking five to 10 minutes a day to self audit, to self audit how you're responding to everything, to plan and be deliberate in how you want the course of that day and your other plans to go and not be reactive, but be the, to the, to the degree that which you control, control things, control yourself, control your responses, control your commitments and, and what you're looking for from yourself. I think a lot of people get, uh, you know, they're just over inundated, too much stress, too much work, too much family. At least that's what they're telling themselves. Uh, you know, for somebody who has the blessing of working in something so holistic, like the gym business, like a CrossFit affiliate, it's easy for me to glean and watch other people and say, man, on my drive here, I need to be auditing you know, how I'm doing these things, you know, how is this going? What is the best way for me to go about this? So I'd say taking, and it, it is a deliberate thing. So I do do on my drive into work as I drink my coffee, I'm not listening to music. I'm not doing all that. I'm auditing, you know, how I want my day to go. Yeah. And it's, so it's I big. love it because you not just doing it, but just having the, the time set apart right. to do it every day that time. If you were to go back and talk, to 10 year old Derek, what piece of advice would you give him? Do the next right thing that you know to be right every time. And you'll have a lot less hardship. I know that sounds super boring, super cliche, but think about what the next right thing is one at a time and do it. Because there, there was a, there's a portion. I think we, most of us, go through it as young adults, where you, you're like, I can get away with not doing this. I can get away with not doing the right thing here, right? I can be lazy on this day. I would say just focus on treating people right and doing the next right thing, especially as a young adult when you're out on your own, and then that transition into the rest of your life will be much smoother. Nice. Yeah. No, this is great because it reminds me of what you said earlier too. You know, do, making the right choices is what you're talking about. Right. And so if you have the right voices around right. you, you're going to make the right choices. You know, it sounds cliche, right? but it is so true. So true. Yeah. Man, I love it. Derek, 100%. Derek, you've been awesome. Thank you for coming on this show. This has been, it's been really impactful. I hope you guys are taking these nuggets home and just – do something with it, you know, execute on some of these things that Derek shared with us. I know your life would just flourish with it. So thank you so much, Derek. I appreciate you. And 
Awesome. See you guys next time. It's been an absolute blast. God bless and thank you. Man, that was a fun episode. I really enjoyed learning how Derek Bishop was able to build his gym debt-free with his strategies for creating revenue and developing his gym identity. What was your favorite takeaway from our episode? I really want to connect with you on Meet Esco on Instagram and share with me the message that really stood out to you. We would love to hear your thoughts. Also, be sure to grab your no-cost QR code flyer at reviewbiz.io forward slash QR code. Thank you once again for joining us and taking the time to listen to this episode today. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the show on the platform you're currently listening on and leave us a rating and review. It would mean the world to us. Also, subscribe to the YouTube channel. You'll get some amazing content there. There's good stuff as well as the chance to never miss an episode. As always, thank you so much for your encouragement. I truly appreciate you listening to the podcast and helping us improve with your comments. And I'll be seeing you next time in the Growth Zone. <laughs>